Hello, friends, and welcome to Service of Change's Change Cast, the podcast for change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II, with Service of Change, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I'm here tonight with my esteemed co host, Joel the Provocateur Schaefer. Joel, what's going on tonight, dude? Same old, same old. Um, trying to make some small changes and uh, engage some other people to do the same. Yeah, you know, we've been doing pretty well with uh, with reaching out to people and stuff. I'm really excited, uh, you know, with my Twitter feed. I think it's, I, I don't know, well, let me let me do the math here. It's at least tripled with, with followers. I never thought I'd be a guy that would talk about how many people follow me on Twitter, but <laughs> with, with what we're trying to do to have a, yeah. a platform for people, uh, I, I'm, I couldn't be more pleased, and I'm so thankful for everybody that's been following me. Uh, you know, and please continue to spread the word. Uh, you know, it's, it's at Dennis Nappy the second N A P P I I I, and uh, you know, we're just trying to spread it. Like Joel said, small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world, and that's it's kind of something I want to talk about tonight. Uh, you know, is is what are the little things that everybody can do? It it doesn't they don't take a lot of effort. Just something so simple that can you know ultimately we want to change the world but if you just brighten somebody's day you know yeah. that can have a, a chain reaction if you believe in chaos theory or follow chaos theory that that can have a positive effect on everybody so that's what we're kind of going to going to get into but uh you know before we do what else is uh, what else is new and exciting with you joel well i just uh published um a three-part uh blog on my um my blog site um it's called nuanced views at uh blogspot.com i might have the the title mixed up sorry i'm a little nervous but basically if you search um google's blog spot and look for or actually it's views with nuance you can find it sorry i'm gonna make it easier for you yeah yeah when you, when you click on the link for this change cast the link to what joel's about to talk about will be sitting right there so you can you can you know uh read about you know what he's it's an interesting story he's gonna you know kind of give you a teaser on it tonight um so we'll have it posted for you and joel don't be nervous dude <laughs> um yeah it's a it's a it's a very intimate and very powerful uh story about a uh, a person's um coming to grips with their um with their personhood with their manhood with their with their personhood more than manhood and uh with their sexuality as well and uh with their with their gender roles and trying to be an adult throughout the whole thing and um it's a true story and uh i think it's 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 uh it's, it can be very impactful and um I think uh, my my way of conveying it also should make it, you know, at least somewhat in- interesting if I can be modest. Yeah, well, you know, you definitely have a way with uh, you know with words and, and capturing people's attention and and, and g- engaging a, an emotional response in people, you know, uh, good or bad. I think you get an emotional reaction out of somebody that's good writing from the things that I've read. I haven't quite Thank gotten you. a chance to read this yet, but I, I look forward to it. And, and like I said, I always look at the comments, and whenever you put something up there, you know. Sometimes I'm like, do I want to comment on this because I know then my phone is going to be blowing up with all the responses <laughs> for the next three days. So sometimes I keep my comments to myself. Just you know how that goes sometimes. But uh, so yeah, I'll have the link to this. Any, anything else you want to say about it, Joel? Or no, just ju- um, just check it out. And um, I think um, like we were going to have a, a pretty good guest on tonight, but we had technical difficulties, so we um, we rescheduled it for tomorrow night. But like one of the things he said to me when I first approached him about it was he was saying that. You know, he's worked in the field and he's familiar with these different like theories of helping people, whether it's an addiction or mental health. And he said it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. He said it's all about relationships. And hopefully tomorrow night we can drill down a little into that to get more specific. But this blog that I wrote, I think I think often like when, when we have these questions about about who people are, like what their sexual identity is, um, what their race is. Um, what their class is, we put people in boxes, and um, uh-huh. and and that compassion can be can 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 be missing. And, and what I hope to convey in this blog is is have some empathy and some compassion for 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 people. Don't just assume they are who they are because they fit into this 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 category or this box that. That basically we we need these sometimes we need these categories and boxes. It's how we protect ourselves from a mm-hmm. from a chaotic world. Mm-hmm. But 
but there's a time and a place for them, and there's also a time to explore that box or to open up that box, so to speak. Well, I think the problem is that we've been conditioned as a society to look at different as either something comical or something wrong because it makes us uncomfortable. And yes. as a defense mechanism, we say, ah, yes. there's something wrong with you, or I don't want to affiliate with that. You know, you're this way, or you're that race, or you're, you're, you're that sexual orientation. And, and at the end of the day, what does that do? It divides us, you know, and, yes. and I look at it as a military tactic, divide and conquer. When you, and the yes. reason why I get so frustrated with politics is because they sit there and they talk about these issues. Oh, you know, gay marriage, we're for gay marriage, we're against gay marriage. It shouldn't be in politics. It has yeah. nothing to do with the politician yeah. deciding if I want to marry somebody of, of yeah. my same gender or not. But that stuff, it further divides us. And we need to start looking past that and saying, you know what, are you a decent human being or are you not? That's all I care about. I don't care what race you are. If you're a different race, there's something I can learn from you. And until yes. we start to embrace that, we're going to keep fighting each other when in reality we should be you know, working against those that are out there that are actually controlling us and causing us to believe different is bad. And, and, and uh, that's interesting because we, we didn't know what we were going to talk about. And I just thought about something that happened to me today. And um, like in defense, and I'm just trying to like – wrap my head around what use these categories and these differences why why do people use them like what what value do they have because they obviously have some kind of value or people wouldn't use them so doesn't mean that they're not ultimately more destructive but in the short term they're shortcuts so uh just to 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 fast forward a little bit like um you know growing up where i did I had this idea that if people were disrespectful to me or that they were rude to me, I needed to to, to challenge that. And, right. and become an adult, you have to learn. You got to pick your battles. So yeah, I have this issue where I pay child support um, to my daughter's mother. Um, my daughter's 15, so I've been paying it for a long time. We go through the state, so there's a record of it. And God forbid if if I ever became an irresponsible person, you know, there would be some kind of uh, repercussions if if I didn't um pay it right so that's what her mother's comfortable with so i respect that but it, the bureaucracy of administering it is sometimes you know um difficult so i send because i work for tips and, and my job that i you know that i make my living with i right. work, work ma mostly for tips so i send a money order to harrisburg and it takes three days to get there and then it takes three days for them to to drop the money in my daughter's mother's account so I sent it last week, so it would be there by the end of the month. I sent, I sent half of it. You know, She needed it for um, my daughter's um, going to be a, um, a sophomore in high school right. this fall. So she needed it for something having to do with school, and they didn't get it. So I had to navigate the bureaucracy uh, and, and, and try to figure out what, um, you know, what happened to this money. Right. And in my experience with dealing with this bureaucracy, often they've been rude or mean to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so what – so I have a profile in my head that these people, for whatever reason, maybe they don't like their job or they're dealing with a lot of a lot of ignorant, you know, consumers, so to speak, or ignorant clients or, or ignorant people that need to pay their child support. And, and mm -hmm. um, so I'm expecting this negative, negative uh, experience. And and um, another thing growing up was I didn't ever want to be fake. So I, I've been uncomfortable, like, say I, 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 I need to just be nice to somebody. And I don't really feel it deep down. <laughs> right, right. Like, just be nice to them for the greater good. Like, I don't know them to be, like, not to be, I'm not talking about, there's no difference between being nice and being impolite. But, right. So anyway, I called, and I got put on hold for a half hour, Ugh. and then I called back, and I actually hung up on me, and I heard them dealing with other customers. Right. Somehow I was on hold with the phone, like, like oh, that's the worst, man. It was weird. <laughs> it's, it's, and I didn't, I just... Go ahead. No, I, I'd say it, it reminds me of sitting on hold anytime yeah. you have an issue with your credit card or your insurance. You know, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same nonsense. And, but go on. And this is a side note. And 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 in my own and we, me and you, Dennis, had talked about maybe we would you know eventually in a future show talk about spirituality or religion or any of that stuff. And yeah. And and w one thing I learned was that sometimes being bored or having to wait that's an opportunity to meditate. So. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lack of activity. Often we don't like activity that's stressful, but then when we're when we're when we're not able to do activity, we want the activity, if that makes any sense. It's sort of like I you ever observe people they're rushing home to do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're rushing home to do nothing. It's like why don't you enjoy the journey, so to speak? So I kept enjoying the journey and saying a little prayer that I say so that I I, I wouldn't react badly if they were rude to me. 
And, and I got on the phone and, and I figured out what happened. The money order got bent in the envelope, and this is the second time it's happened. So it's gotten sent back. So then I got to go cash it and then resend what? it <laughs> and ridiculous. do all this stuff. It is, but but that's God just forbid the- you, you you know. You- your, your daughter's mother really desperately needed that money, which is yeah. the case sometimes over exactly. something stupid like, oh, it got it got bent. Are you kidding me? I, they I, said it, they, they, it won't scan. They said it won't scan into their system. So I, in, that's instead of getting angry at them because they're just doing their job. Like so I'm get back right to this. now. Right. OK. <laughs> no, but it's righteous. <laughs> it's righteous frustration. Yeah. And but when we personalize that righteous frustration – against the person or the category that they represent, then we sow division. So it's the art, and I imagine you've gone through this before, where it's the art of you've had probably pupils or students that you had to call them out because their behavior was inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But how did you correct them without putting them down? So why, how did you – maybe you were frustrated with them. How did you, you know, um, I, maybe I, make it a teachable moment? I have a rule of thumb, and I always try to deliver the positive with the negative. So if I have a student that's acting up, that's I, you know, good. I'll pull them aside and be like, "Look, you know, if if they're having just an off day, my conversation will go something like this: Look, you're usually right on point. You usually yeah. you know, don't have any issues, and and I have so much respect for X Y Z progress you made. What happened today? You know, what what's going on? So they they're built up. They know that I respect them. They know that." You know, I'm giving them that level of respect. And, and, you know, kind of to relate it to what you're talking about, when I have to deal with, you know, a bank or a credit card issue or something like that, and I get on the phone, no matter how frustrated I am, how much I just maybe want to cuss somebody out, I I do always come to it from a level of, uh, you know, respect and politeness because, number one, now I have somewhere to escalate to. If I come in there screaming and being rude, that's not going to help me. At all, yeah. Period. Yeah. You know, so if I say, "Hey, look, I- I'm sorry, my frustration's not directed at you, but I am really upset about something." You know, I-, I apologize if I come off rude. I just really need this fixed. Can you help me? And sometimes people will bend over backwards because now I'm showing a vulnerability. I'm showing them my emotion. Yeah. You know, and that and that goes a long way. You know? and, and they're able to empathize because often yes. they they've been in a similar situation. They're like, "Hey," and they're and they're so used to people just scream at them. My father yeah. worked in customer service. And he said that there are people that would come in there, and he worked for AT&T, and literally throw the phone at him and say, fix my damn phone. And he'd be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to take my time doing this. And, oh, I can't help. You know what I mean? He's, he's that yeah. much quicker to blow him off or dismiss him. And he said when somebody came in that was polite, you're yeah. that much more inclined to go that extra mile for somebody. You know, So as frustrated as you may be, understand that that person deals with you know, however many jerks every single day, and they – they come into it, and I'll say this as a former cop: it's so hard not to expect the next person you encounter to be a jerk, to be to exactly. lie to you, to be rude to you. Exactly. You know, so uh, and and that's their journey, that's their challenge, is to remember that everybody deserves that equal opportunity to prove, you know, that assume that they're a decent person and let them prove to you otherwise. That, that's the kind benefit of, how I try of the to, doubt. Give yeah, people that's, the benefit of go. the doubt. In many less and words than I said. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, and it's very interesting because when my daughter's mother first told me about this like i'm frustrated because about the whole situation because it is so indirect right and i have to send it to and there's been several different problems dealing with it because i'm sending something to harrisburg and then they're putting it to her there's too many there's a middleman so to speak right and and so i'm a little defensive because i would rather me just give her cash yeah just that once a month when i come she lives in norristown which is about 20 miles away right well actually she lives in phoenixville now so it's about 25 miles one one way or whatever just go up there i'll hand you the the 500 dollars for the month right and we're done with it like right. we, we're both adults but that's not how she wants to do it right but what's interesting what you said was i was scrambling around with a little bit of defense but also like i i take pride in paying my bills on time i feel yeah. good about that and so I'm scrambling around. I call the I call the money order number to see if it's been cashed. It hasn't been cashed. I go to the check cashing place where I know the people, and they tell me that there's recourse. I can cancel it, but then they'll send it to me in six weeks. So that's three hundred dollars in six weeks. Right. So I'm doing all this other stuff, and and she says to me, "I, I it's not your fault. Don't stress." And instantly, what you talked about came over me, where I was motivated to call the call Harrisburg again because I called Harrisburg again and found at first the first time right. I found out that it wasn't cashed and I, and she tried to get a live person too so I was I was like she's like it's not your fault 
And she's right. like, but I need this money. And so I was, she was humanized rather than being this adversary who right. wants to do things her way and she won't, she won't cancel this thing through the courts because she doesn't trust me or whatever. And I could just give her the 500. I'm like, well, she needs the money. Even right. if she doesn't want to do things this way, let me go the next step and wait for her. Basically, it took an hour of my time and I got an answer. And they're sending it back to my old address, which is another thing. So I had to call my old, <laughs> my old landlord. Oh, jeez. And I was nice to him, even though there were some things that went on between me and him. And and it was just like we were talking about small changes that can that that we can make. And and these weren't the things I was taught how to act growing up. Right. And and like through being around some good positive people. And like learning some of the stuff, like what you just said about about when you when you're correcting somebody, start from the positive, and then they have like a, a reference point to the negative. Right. So not only does it soften soften the blow, that ego blow of you criticizing them, they also have something to compare it to. Yeah. So it's like compare and contrast. So their mind is actually activated. So and they're learning. Yep. And they're learning. They're getting to go. Okay, I didn't do well at this today, or I'm not that good at this. Like me and you were talking about. When we were thinking about what to do for the show, I was like, well, you know, I'm good at riffing, you know, riffing mm-hmm. like jazz, like spontaneous, like yeah, you freestyle. Saw me on a, yeah, freestyle. And and, and I, I saw you as more the idea man. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the type of thing like and like you're more focused and task oriented and detail oriented. So somebody criticizes me about not being detail oriented. But they're like, hey, Joel, but you're really brilliant. That's not going to feel as bad right? Right. <laughs> as if somebody just says you're, you're messy or your microphone's not working or what's wrong with your computer that it's not – like why don't you – like this is, this is all the, the stuff that goes on in my head when like we were having technology difficulties. And, and just as you, one as you said your microphone's example. not working, as you said your microphone's not working, it started uh, scrambling up a little bit. So I don't know if it's the microphone okay. feeling your passion, but that's actually a good point. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on here. Let me take a, a quick break right here. It's, we're at a good point in the conversation, and uh, we'll be right back after this. I challenge you to try to teach them. Encourage them and listen to them. Listen to their stories of home with drunken mothers, jailed fathers, and bullet-filled brothers. And once you've become a part of them, once you've given yourself to them, then I challenge you to come up with a plan to help them. I was trying to prove something that I was told didn't exist. The threat was out there, and I needed to find it. We heard screaming coming from the inside. My smile disappeared immediately, and I pounded hard on the door. Nobody answered, but the screaming continued. It's interesting to note, however, that regardless of how well your class is behaving and how well-trained you think you have your students, your carefully constructed order and structure that you have worked so hard to build can be destroyed in a moment. Hi, I'm Dennis Nappy II, author of Service, A Soldier's Journey counterintelligence, law enforcement, and the violence of urban education. What you just heard were quotes from my story. If you'd like to hear more, you can find my book at serviceofchange.com, at amazon.com, and wherever books are sold. Thank you. And welcome back to Service of Change's Changecast, the podcast for change. I'm Dennis Nappy II with my co-host, Joel Schaefer. And uh, we're just kind of having a free conversation tonight about interacting with people and, and you know how you deal with your frustrations when you come across somebody that, that isn't really uh, helping you the way you want them to or they're giving you criticism. And the best way to offer criticism, uh, you know, we're having a, a great discussion going on about that. Before I jump back into that, just ways that you can follow us, uh, you know, go to our website, www.serviceofchange.com, where we have a lot of uh, really great articles that talk about the small changes people can do to make that massive impact around the world. Check out our ChangeCast page where we have links to all of our change casts. Uh, we have a YouTube page, and there's links on that as well, where uh, you know we have all our, our recent change casts. The one starting with Joel uh, once he joined our show. Uh, also through YouTube, if you'd like to listen to that, you can subscribe to our change cast through iTunes as well. There's links on the serviceofchange.com page on the right hand side. Uh, and what am I missing here? And Twitter and Facebook, Facebook.com/slash serviceofchange. And on the Twitter feed, Dennis Nappy, I-I, N-A-P-P-I-I-I, Dennis Nappy II on Twitter. Please follow me there as well. Uh, you know, we, we really love interacting with our listeners and, and hope to hear from you and hear your ideas and your experiences. And what helps us out the most is if you could just hit that little share button, hit that little like button, and help us spread the word of change. Uh, you know, we'd really appreciate that. It would help out, you know, our entire movement. So, okay, there's my little uh, my mini soapbox commercial, Joel. We can get back into this now. So you were talking about uh, you know, just your experiences with dealing with the bureaucracy up in Harrisburg. You're trying to pay your child support bills, and Harrisburg 
you know, couldn't cash the check because it was bent. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't scan. So now they're gonna send it back, and and um, I was just uh, reflecting about how through making small changes on a daily basis in my life and being around good people who encourage that process that like I today was a good day because I didn't let I didn't let those things that I couldn't control define my day and mm-hmm. I just kept trying to move forward for what was best for everybody involved regardless of of their how I disagreed with the way they handled things and, and surprisingly the um because we started off this conversation about how we can put people in boxes. Surprisingly, right. the lady was incredibly helpful. I went in assuming they'd be like, I don't know why it didn't come through. All I can tell you is that we didn't cash it. Right. <laughs> like, right. Instead, she was helpful and, 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 and she was polite and everything. I had a wonderful experience. I, don't, I wish that it could've, they could have found some other way to cash my money order, but, right. but that's neither here nor there. And, and you got to um, look at it. So it's just know. problem solving. Right, and, and you got to Go look ahead, at I'm it, sorry. and it's tough. You know, I, I'm so mad right now, and yeah. this person's being helpful, but they're not solving my problem. Yeah. You know, I want to just scream at them and get mad at them, but you got to yeah. take that that step back and be like, it's not their fault. You know, yeah. they're doing a job, yeah. and they are doing everything they can to help me. You, you just you walk away feeling unfulfilled sometimes. We got to step back, and I, I look at it and say, you know, did we handle it respectfully? Did I get at least some information? Were they helpful? Yes, I know they can't do anything more for me, and, and it's it's tough. You know, it, it really is difficult, you know, but I, I liked what you said about taking that minute to just meditate when you're sitting there on hold and, and to enjoy the moment, uh, you know, ever, enjoy the journey. And I, I, I say that in my head all the time, but it's it's so hard for me to do sometimes. I find with, you know, my anxiety and, and my stress tends to spike sometimes, but I, I've started studying Tai Chi, I guess, about three years ago. And when I'm stressed, I at least stop and I do my deep you know, Tai Chi, my meditation, breathing, and it does help. It calms me down, it grounds me, and it brings me back at least to a point where I'm not going to snap as soon as somebody gets on the phone. Yeah, yeah. And so. um, and and like one of my hypotheses or you know theories about human beings is that like more intelligent, driven, even successful people, we can be our own worst enemy because like say that example like when we're waiting, we're waiting for something. The, the the temptation and the pressure from around us is to multitask. Uh-huh. It's like, oh, this is time I could be doing something else. Right. Why don't I try to wash the dishes while I'm on, on hold? And let me take the dog out because I was at home. I'm just thinking about the example like I was at home. Yeah. Like, we could be in the car. And, and, and so we tend to want to um, do as much as possible with a little amount of time because that's efficient. And sometimes it is efficient, but other times um, – that lends to that anxiety that you talked about. And, and where... you, yeah, and you know what, Joel? And that's that's something I'm dealing with a lot right now. I have I have a two year old and I have a, a daughter who's four months old, and I find that when there's times that I'm supposed to be tending to my kids and it's like the mindless stuff, like feeding her a bottle. Yeah. Uh, I try to also be on my phone sometimes and, and yeah. update and, and stuff with, with my company and, and with the website. And, you know, I'm trying to multitask because I have so many things I want to do every day. And I find that yeah. when I'm doing that, when she gets a little bit fussy, I get so frustrated with her and I get so angry. You know, it's because I'm trying to feed her and focus on this, but she keeps moving and knocking the phone out of my hand or whatever. Yeah. And when I put that phone down and and just focus on my daughter – my anxiety is not there, and well, it's still there, but it's not yeah, it's anywhere not as near as extreme, you know. So sometimes you're right. We need to just, in, in, I need to enjoy that time with this beautiful little girl that I have sitting in my in my lap, you know. And and it's tough as a as a you know fairly new father. I struggle with that, you know, trying to multitask. But when I can step away and sit there and just just hold my daughter and feed her that bottle and not worry about the the darn cell phone and the website and everything like that, yeah, it goes a lot smoother for me. Well, because I think there's also a lot of us have like this insanity of expecting doing the same things, expecting different results or thinking yep. we can control. And like when we're doing a task and if we can't give our full attention to it, we're not going to get good results. And when mm-hmm. we don't get res- good results, we get afraid. Our body kicks in fear because we're like, oh, I'm going to fail. And even if it's something stupid right. and small, our body might not know the difference. So we're kicking in. I mean, it's not the same thing as if, like, you know, a train. You get irritated, and being irritated or annoyed physiologically is – so you get 
upset. Your brain starts kicking in like those stress hormones. Right. And then you get frustrated, and so you end up doing both tasks that you're trying to multitask with poorly. poorly right. And then the frustration level goes way up. And I often find myself thinking, I'll, I'll just handle it. I'll just make sure I don't get upset this time. But right. but my body is a complicated survival machine, yep. like the product of of five billion years of evolution. It's doing things for me that I'm not necessarily in control of. And right. and, and and so it's a balancing act though, because we do have to multitask. And, and we do, and, you know, we do. But but it's I, I think it's definitely um it goes hand in hand with how we treat people. And if if you link the two subjects we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Like giving, giving that that ourselves that attention is going to give us more opportunity to be more compassionate to the people we're dealing with. And that's and you know I think part of the problem is is the way our society's geared, and it seems to keep going more and more to this with people. You know, employers keep asking you to do more with less. You got to yeah. get all this done in a day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and that creates that level of stress and anxiety, which is just unhealthy on so many levels. It on is. so many levels, it's unhealthy. You know, and I always say, if you can step back, you know, I remember, I remember, I learned this lesson in boot camp. I was assigned, I think, like three different jobs that that each job took like ten minutes to do, and I had two minutes to do all of them. The idea is they're going to give you too much to try and break it down and make you fail. So my drill instructor screaming at me. It's my first week. Get this done. Get that done. And I, and I, I actually just stopped. It, it was only about two seconds that I stopped, but in my head, I real quick counted to 10, and I said, there's no way I can get this all done at once, so I'm just going to do one thing at a time. I know he's going to yell at me no matter what I do, and I'm going to do it. And I ended up, he didn't scream at me, he kept the pressure on me, but I got everything done to task, and he, and he kind of let me off the hook a little bit. You know, Take your time, handle it one step at a time, and, and focus on what you can control. You know, And stop letting these employers and these people put all that pressure on you, because you're going to do better if you take your time and do that one task at a time, you know. Yeah, we gotta we gotta stand up for stand up for ourselves too. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's another interesting um, that's another interesting uh, epiphany I had recently um, where I was thinking about myself and how mean I can be to myself. Like we all have internal monologues, we talk to right. ourselves, so to speak. It's not the same thing as having voices in your head, but we have a little voice in our head that will you know we'll be critiquing ourselves and. And I realized that I think my own soul or body is mine to do with what I please. Mm -hmm. So I will treat myself like way more poorly than I would treat another person. Right. I I talk to myself so much worse than I would talk to another person. That's because I think I have ownership over this phenomenon that is Joel, whether it's a spirit, whether it's just a body, whatever your, whatever your personal belief is. And when you start to, to, once again, whether your personal be- what your personal belief is 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 when when I started to realize that I was connected to other people and connected to the world, whether or not we're, I'm connected by energy or soul or I'm connected to God or even if it's just we're all biological, I'm still connected. Right. And when I realized that, I was like, this is not necessarily my own to do with what I because what I do to myself is necessarily going to have consequences to other people. Uh And and so I got to start treating myself, stop acting like I'm like my own body and my, my, my own mind is my own little toy that I can throw up against the wall and break. It's not an Island. You know, I mean, you're, you're a father that there you go. That's a perfect example right there. You know, that, that was a game changer for me because before I I took a lot of risks professionally with my life at times, you know, not intentionally, but it's like, I know I'm leaving my house. I may not come home tonight as a father, you know, that changes things. If I see something going on in a certain area, now I'm going to call 911 and say, hey, we need officers here. Before I maybe go step in and get involved right. and say, hey, how can I help? You know, if, if there's a violence, you know, escalation situation going on or something. So it, it is a game changer because my life is not my own anymore because you see the yeah. connection that you yeah. have to people. Um, you know, we're, we're coming up uh, on, towards the end of our show. I know you and I had talked about, uh, you know, a proposal that we have for our listeners and everybody out there. Uh, you know, in the spirit of small changes can have a massive impact around the world. You know, you and I were talking about just simply try and say something nice to a stranger once a day and, and let's see how it goes. Isn't that what we were talking about, Joel? Yeah. And um, I mean, some of it might just be our culture here. And I mean, I know a lot of our listeners probably are from this area, but, you know, people on the East Coast and in the big cities, they don't necessarily say hi to each other. Right. And, and like, I, that's not it's more of a small town thing. And I've got to say, in my experience, you know, when I was when I was running my detective agency, I was down, uh, you know, in, in North Philly. It was probably 11 o'clock at night. I was I was looking for somebody, um, 
you know, simple stuff, serving like a court document. And I'm coming down this one street. It's all dark, and, and I'm the only white face in the neighborhood. And um, you know, there's a group of guys standing on the corner. And I'm pretty sure they were dealing. And you know, as I walked, up, I, I said to myself, I said I could, I could cross the street and avoid them completely and just keep going on about my day. But that might mean look, make me look like I'm scared and I'm trying to avoid them for whatever reason to draw attention to myself. So I decided I'm going to walk straight up to them, you know, and just and, and walk past them. And I got up to them, I made eye contact with them, and I said, "Hey, what's going on, fellas? How are you tonight?" And they looked at me and they said, "You know, hey, what's going on, man?" And we had like a, a, a brief five minute conversation, and that had such an impact on me because in my mind I was stereotyping. I go, "Oh, these are drug dealers. I'm in, I'm in the hood. You know, they're gonna they're gonna jump me. They're gonna rob me. They're gonna this, that, and the other." And, and they didn't, and that totally changed so much for me, and it, it made my night feel so much better. I said I just had such a positive, beautiful interaction with people, all because I made eye contact, showed respect, and say, "Hey, hey, how are you tonight?" You know, it makes such a difference. So I think what we're, what we're proposing that you do is is go out and and say hi or give a compliment to a total stranger. Try and do it once a day. Try and do it once a week. Whatever, a small change. It's such a small change in your life, but we want to hear about it. You know, you can email Joel, Joel at serviceofchange.com. Email me, dnappy2 at serviceofchange.com. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit us up on Facebook. Let us know how that's going for you and, and how you feel when you did it. What do you think, Yeah, Joel? definitely. I, and I think that you'll feel good. I, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's been my experience. It's such and a, you, build, you, start, you start building relationships with people. Next thing you know, that person could be a friend. That person yeah. could give you a job in six weeks. That person, like in my neighborhood, I live, I live in a – I'll make this quick because I know we're coming up at the end. But uh, yeah. I live in you know, Upper Darby where it's kind of like West Philly now. And, and I make friends with my neighbors because I love people you know, as other human beings, but also because they might, they might help me out if something were go, to go down. They might right. call the police and help me. Right. You know what I mean? It's a survival thing. Like, and I'll help them if something's going down with them. I mean, this is, I'd this, rather, this has many repercussions that are beneficial. I'd know? rather someone respect me than somebody fear me because when my back's exactly. turned, someone who respects me is going to watch it as opposed to somebody who fears me. They may try to take a shot or let me take my lumps, you know? So, uh, you know, and, and just another prime example, Joel and I were just acquaintances, you know, we were friends. He was, he's a friend of a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I know I reached out to him one or two times when he put stuff up on Facebook and he reached out to me one or two times and, that level of respect between us developed into this relationship we have now where we're, we're both feeling very fulfilled doing these change casts and, and trying to inspire change. So you never know where it's going to take you just by a simple hello or, hey, you look nice today or let me hold that door for you, yeah. you know, something. You know, but let's try and make that difference. And, and we won't, But we want to hear about it because we want to promote it and we want to tell other people and encourage them to do it. So we're, yeah. we're just about out of time, Joel, about 15 seconds. Any final thoughts? No, I was just going to say and the other thing is that, that there are – little aspects to those interactions that we can learn from absolutely you can learn that we can learn the details of how you're actually doing it what yeah. were what were the challenges because sometimes there might be challenges someone might you might say hi to them like what do you want right yeah <laughs> how yeah. do you react you can learn from your failures and, and from, yeah. or like you said the challenges that you face and that's what we yeah. kind of what we talked about at the beginning of the show you know embrace people's differences and l yeah. use it as a learning opportunity not as an opportunity to divide us exactly. so on that uh, you know, that's all the time that we have. I'm Dennis, and, and I'm here with Joel Schaefer tonight. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Please share it on your social media networks. Email it wherever you have to do. Please help us get the word out. If you want to be a guest on our show, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear, you know, your stories of inspiration and change and how you're making a difference. Remember, small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. Be that change. Thank you.